What's the next step for you, Jeff well, Boris? Th there's roughly 600 fighters in the UFC uh, this last weekend. I think we counted up 577. And you have to get 30% of the membership to sign solicitation cards. So let's just call it 180. At that time, you go to the UFC and you say, will you voluntarily recognize us as a union, as a bargaining agent for the fighters? And what are the odds of that happening? <laughs> Slim to none. I mean, I'm not getting that warm, fuzzy feeling from them. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that's going to happen. So then we would go ahead and we would submit to the National Labor Relations Board. And then there would be an election. And then the fighters would either vote us in or they wouldn't vote us in. And what do you th so you're saying that some of these fighters are concerned that that if it doesn't happen, I guess look, my question for you is this then, Jeff, is that how doesn't it essentially, because it happens in every one of these sports, right? Doesn't it essentially come to the withholding of services and the threatening of it at some point to get something done? And the question is, is how does that happen? Where else would these fighters go? And wouldn't the UFC just go ahead and just keep getting people who are just trying to get fights instead? Well, the right? strength and the leverage that we would have once we become a union is obviously a strike, which would be a, a what I would call a weapon of last resort. Let's just say we had our first collective bargaining session, and I said, I want to get medical insurance for these guys. Something as simple as so that. So right now there is no, I, it, unless they're training, right? Unless they're in the midst of training, there's that, that medical services are covered? Right. right. If they have a training-related injury or they get hurt while they're in the octagon, their, their bills would be covered. But if a guy uh, gets bronchitis and needs to go to the doctor, that's not going to be covered. So Nate Diaz in his face right now is covered? That would be covered. Okay. That would be covered. But if Nate Diaz suddenly comes down with a cold, he's got to go ahead and take care of it himself. He's on, he's on his own. So obviously, as I said, a strike would be a last resort, hmm. uh, something that we would never want. But there's strength in, in leverage and unity. And that's why having a union with all these fighters, I think we'll be able to get those things that they are sorely in need of. Have you reached out to Conor McGregor? Have you had a conversation with him? I promised I won't say names of okay. anybody. So I will tell you that I've met with the entry level fighters, the guys, the men and women who are making 10 and 10, 10,000 yes. a show and 10,000 right. win all the way up to the top, and I've talked to as many representatives as I can of all the fighters as Jeff, well. Jeff Boris here on the Rich Eisen Show. So um, let's, let's I guess, brass tax it for me here. When, when, when do you need to get your certification done by, do you think, to keep the momentum going now, for you? I, I'm going to Dallas Wednesday, taking a look. I think the certification cards, the solicitation cards will be printed up then, mm -hmm. and starting on Wednesday. I believe that from the first signature that we get, we have 12 months. So in order to accomplish that, I hope it won't take that long, but I, I'm not sure. Okay. And does this remind you of anything you've ever gone through in your career? Well, in, in baseball, I've been through lockouts, strikes, right. collusion on multiple occasions, unfair labor practice charges. Mm -hmm. So I think I pretty much run the full gamut. Uh, hopefully, if we become a union, there's labor peace. I, 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 I'm a peacetime union organizer, but <laughs> <laughs> peacetime union organizer. But I nevertheless, like that phrase. I, nevertheless, I, I won't be afraid to fight as we've done in baseball several times in, in the event that we don't get what's fair and what's right. So you're saying these guys aren't independent contractors right now? Is that what you're saying right now? And, and ladies, that technically that you don't believe that they are because the way that the UFC business is set up in a way that they're they're not employees of the UFC, right? So Right. In the contract, the UFC has them sign. It says that they're independent contractors, but they're not, and I'll tell you why. They tell the fighters when to fight, who they're going to fight, what they're going to wear when they're fighting, and then they also tell them, you're not allowed to fight in any other promotion for any other entity, which is no different than baseball, basketball, football, hockey. They tell them the same, same exact thing. So <laughs> if, if the fighters of the UFC are not employees, then neither are baseball players, basketball players, football players, hockey players. I guess they're not either. It's a very self-serving statement on the part of the UFC by calling them independent contractors and having them sign that in their deals because they're not. What are the odds this gets done without having to go in front of a judge? Go in front of a judge? Yeah. <laughs> well, basically I'm, say that to basically argue these points in a way that that gets argued about, or is this just a flat out National Labor Relations Board argument that you say in front of them? I'm yeah. just trying to figure this out, having been through this this sort of lockout wars myself. Yes, I think I think the NLRB will be the ones that will make that decision. Decision. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. 
are you guys are you just looking at the UFC or are you also looking at other entities like Bellator or Pride? And how important is it for you guys to get other fighters like we had Randy Couture sitting in here last week in that seat who has no relationship with the UFC because he tried to do things like unionize, get player benefits. How important is it for you to get those older fighters to maybe talk to some of these younger guys about how important this could be for their careers? I think it's very important for the older fighters to come and talk to the younger fighters because I believe that the fighters of today have a duty of gratitude towards the fighters that came before them as they have a loyalty to the fighters they're fighting against today and the fighters that will come behind them. So I think that's very important. In fact, a fighter brought up to me uh, the possibility that if we were to get pensions, is it possible that we could then designate some retired fighters to give pensions to, like a, a Randy Couture? That would be a, a good example. But for the time being, the only promotion that we're, we're targeting is the UFC fighters. Bellator, possibly in the future, I don't know. But at the time being, it's just limited to the UFC. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.